What's up, y'all? If you live in an older apartment like mine, you probably have one of these wall air conditioning units. So I'm going to show you how to beautify it and cover it up so that you don't look at this ugly thing all day. First things first, make measurements that are going to clear your air conditioner by at least one to one and a half or two inches, both on the sides and top and bottom. Also, make sure that you measure how far your air conditioner unit comes out of the wall. Very important. This is an eight foot piece of solid aspen that I bought at Menard. This is what we're going to start building the frame out of. Um, make sure that you got plenty to work with or even for mistakes. The longest part of my air conditioning unit to clear it is going to be 27 inches. The sides are 17 inches. So what I'm doing is cutting it at an angle and I'm cutting the one inch side at the angle because again this is going to be the frame around the air conditioning unit. If you don't want to miter the corners, you're not familiar with how to miter, and you haven't watched my video on mitering, if you don't have a miter box or a hacksaw, you don't have to do it this way. You can always uh, attach them by right angles. However, I wanted a more framed look, so I am going to miter my corners, but you don't have to. So once we've got the 27 inch piece finished here, this is what it looks like up close. Again, that's the one inch side that you're looking at. The two inch side that's more broad, that is what's going to help me clear the air conditioner. Now I'm showing you to make sure that the two pieces are exactly the same. I just match them up. I'm going to make a simple marking right across there and then I'm going to cut that at an angle as well so that I have two identical pieces. Now once you've cut your pieces, you may end up with some little jagged spots. All you need to do is get out a nice fine buffing block and just sand it down a little bit and then you'll come out with much smoother, nicer, softer, non-splintery edges. I'm also going to put some front panels on the top of the frame. These are with a much more narrow solid aspen. These are 1 4 inch. This is going to go on top of the frame and I'm going to cut those basically the same way that I cut the um, the more narrow pieces except instead of cutting them on the short side I'm going to cut them on the broad side and I'm just using this to make sure that they will line up because they will be nailed to each other make sure that I get the same exact measurements after making those markings I'm just going to get started on cutting out those uh, one-fourth wide aspen pieces with the miter box. FYI, if you do decide to invest in a miter box, they are not expensive. They run like eight to eleven dollars depending on who you buy them from. But they're very handy to have if you're going to be doing any woodworking uh, projects in your home and it's also much easier if you saw with your piece of wood closest to you. We're actually going to begin to join the frame together. This is called a corner clamp. These are not expensive either. Uh, there are a lot of bad reviews on the really cheap ones. I found this to be very handy. It was like nine bucks and it's like my tool of the week. <laughs> the miter box was the tool of the week last week. The corner clamp is the tool of the week this week. But anyway, what it does is it helps you join a right angle together so that if you don't have two hands or a complete workstation, as you can see, I'm just working on the floor, then this is like having an extra hand. Once you get those right angles lined up perfectly, then you can go ahead and either nail them together you can use wood glue if you want to. You can use staples. You can use a variety of different. The nails that I'm using are one inch brass nails. They're pretty much all general purpose nails. I picked these up at Menards as well. I'm sure you get like a hundred in a pack for 
no more than like two or three dollars they'll actually be handy in more than just woodworking projects especially because they are one inch nails so I like them a lot I haven't had any problems out of them and I am nailing uh, two nails per side so it was actually four nails per joint once they're joined together this is what it looks like you can use a smaller nail uh, with a smaller head if you want to but I wanted to make sure that it got all the way through each panel of the frame and then you simply just release the corner clamp and your two pieces should be completely joined at a right angle make sure you use a square to check and make sure that it is a perfect right angle once you've joined all four sides of the frame together you want to double check and make sure that it is going to clear the length and width of your air conditioning unit make sure you pull the cord through that frame if you don't have a wireless unit then you're going to put the cord back down underneath of the frame and then you're going to mark around that cord because we got to make sure that there's room for that cord to clear that frame so here are the markings and then very gently just using the saw to saw about a half an inch on each of those markings then I don't have a small chisel for that size my chisel is much bigger so I'm just using a flathead screwdriver and a hammer giving it a gentle, gentle tap and like butter the little piece just popped out so now I've got this nice little area where the cord can come through the frame. Use a box cutter to carve away any excess wood splinters. Also use a sanding block to sand down that area and get it nice and smooth in case there are any splinters as well. Then double check to make sure the cord will clear. If not, this is the time to make adjustments. To complete the frame, we're going to add the front panels on to help conceal part of the air conditioner as well as give us a sturdy place to apply our metal sheeting. Go ahead and nail the 27 inch pieces or your long pieces to the long parts of the frame and then your short pieces to the short pieces of the frame. This part's pretty simple. I would suggest uh, nailing in one corner but not all the way and then going down to the other corner making sure that both the panel and the frame line up and then once you've got in two nails then go ahead and hammer it all the way through if you want to add a third nail in the center that's up to you I added a third nail because I thought it would make a little bit more sturdy seeing as how the the front panel of the Aspen is only one-fourth uh, thickness and it is a very lightweight wood so I just wanted it on there very sturdy and stable Once your frame and your front panels, this is what it should look like. Now you can take it outside and spray paint it or you can use any type of color paint that you want. This metal sheeting I bought from Home Depot it was originally silver. I spray painted it copper to match the rest of the decor that's in my living room, especially the, all the other metal uh, elements and it is literally one eighth inch larger than the opening of this frame so I had to be very careful with where I placed it but I'm just going to place it with the painted side down and make sure everything that you've been painting or spray painting has dried already otherwise you may mess up your finish or the surface on which you're working due to the thinness of those front panels I'm going to use thumbtacks to attach the metal sheeting to the back side of those panels to make sure that they don't poke all the way through and mess up the front of the frame. If you don't get something as thin you may be able to find some half inch nails that will work or you can even staple these in or glue them in. That's up to you. Once I finished tacking on the metal sheeting I did discover that there were a couple spots that were poking through where the thumbtack head of it just poked through just a little bit but really not enough for anybody else to be able to tell but just as future reference for you if you do this project 
This is completely optional, but I'm going to be using patio screening on the inside of the frame as well to keep out any bugs who like to travel through while the cover is going to be closed. Also, sometimes while my air conditioner is running, I get these little pieces of rust that come out through the vent. So I'm going to use this as a protection to keep anything that's going to try to exit through the air conditioner besides cool air. And I'm going to attach this with thumbtacks as well. To make sure that the frame is going to close against the wall, I'm going to use this magnetic cabinet catch. The strike plate goes to the wall. The magnet goes on the inside of the frame. Also, to make sure that it has the ability to open and close, I'm going to be using these utility hinges. And I'm going to be using two of them because that's what's in the pack, two hinges. So first things first, I'm going to go ahead and attach the magnet to the inside of the frame. If a magnet closure is your choice to make your frame close and stay flush with the wall, you might want to think about using one that's a little bit more heavy duty. I happen to have these around the house for another project that I am not going to be completing. And so I went ahead and used them because I wanted to get this project done last night. But this magnet is not as um, attracted to the strike plate as I would like it to be. So try and find one that is a little bit more heavy duty or high traffic use than this one. Also, when it comes to applying the hinges, make sure that you get a hinge that's not too big for your project and definitely one that's not too small. Otherwise, it could rip right out of the wall. When you're applying them, make sure that the hinge closes and apply the hinge to your frame on the side. I am going to be putting the hinges closest to the corner of the wall where they will not be seen by um, guests and visitors in my home. As a matter of fact, they won't even be able to tell how this frame was attached to the wall unless I open it. When attaching your hinges, you might want to drill them only halfway through. Make sure there's an adjustment on the hinge if it's off a little bit. And then go ahead and drill the second screw all the way through. Then go back up to the first one and drill that one all the way through. Repeat on the second hinge. At this juncture in the project, you might want to find somebody who can help you. Either they can drill it into the wall or they can hold up the frame. But if you live alone like myself or if you are an overachiever like myself, you can stack stuff all the way up to the wall to where you want to drill it. <laughs> I actually have a uh, an armoire and then three pieces of wood stacked on top of each other to get the frame exactly where I want by the air conditioner. And make sure that when you drill it, that you drill it so that when it closes, it will clear all sides of the air conditioner. Once you've got it all drilled together, then you can go on the side and mark where your strike plate needs to be drilled into the wall or to the existing frame around your air conditioner. Nail or drill your strike plate onto the wall or existing frame. Close it and voila! Test the efficiency of your air conditioning unit by closing the frame and running it for an hour. If your room is not cool or there's condensation on the AC unit, you need to keep your frame open. If there's no condensation and the room is cool, you can close your frame and use it. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for viewing.